All right, guys, so I'm here in my living room to tell you about the project that I'm going to be undertaking in this new video. So if you watch the Tinley Park video, you know about my pickups. You know that I was able to get my hands on a baby Lichianus gecko uh, for an outstanding price. And uh, I'm very excited to have this gecko in my collection. And uh, really, honestly, at this point for me, it's just a pet gecko. Um, so even though that's really small, I want to set it up in something really nice. Um, not to say that all my geckos don't get the best that I can possibly give them. They do. Many of them live in tubs, and that lychee is currently in a quarantine tub right now, but I would like to move it into something much nicer. So let me show you what I got at Tinley. Oh. This right here is a brand new Exoterra Mini Tall. So it's 12 by 12 on the bottom and 18 inches tall. So yes, this is definitely not a big enough enclosure to last that lychee its entire life, but it will last it a while. And this enclosure I was able to get for, that is the correct price, 60 bucks, believe it or not, brand new. I took all the packaging off already, but I got it at the Pangea booth. Shout out to Pangea. You guys are awesome. I order stuff from you all the time when I'm at home. And when you go to the Tinley Park show, their booth is by far one of the coolest booths there. You can get anything you need for anything that you have, basically. They have tons and tons of supplies, not to mention some amazing geckos. Just a little plug, out of the goodness of my heart, for Pangea, everybody knows about Pangea. The video is not sponsored by Pangea, but I love them, so why not talk about them? But like I said, this is the Exoterra Mini Tall, and you can see that it doesn't look like the ones you buy in the store. What's it missing? It's missing the background. This is the background that it came with. Absolutely nothing wrong with this thing, you know, totally fine. Uh, I, I mean, I've used Exoterras before with the with the stock backgrounds. They look really nice, they look realistic. Whatever molding process they use to make these makes them look nice. But uh, I've recently started a project on my own where I am making custom backgrounds. As many of you know, I do keep, breed, and also sell my geckos. And I do vend local uh, reptile expos here in West Virginia. Um, but I wanted to bring something more to the table, so to speak, and literally. And so I decided to start working on these custom backgrounds. And I'm making them out of a uh, styrofoam board, basically uh, the really thick insulation board that you can buy from the home improvement stores. And I carved them down into various different shapes, rock walls, wooden type uh, walls and stuff like that. And uh, make them for anything from the prefab exoterras or the zoo med enclosures to something custom that you may be building on your own. And the idea is to hopefully be able to find a market for that. I've taken them to a couple expos and gotten some really good feedback on how cool they look and everything, and that's nice. But uh, everybody says I need a display for my table so I can show what my custom background looks like in a nicely set up terrarium. So that's exactly what I'm going to do with this mini tall. And I just basically want to take you on the journey of uh, what it takes to make one of these backgrounds and how I'm going to set up this Exoterra Mini Tall for my brand new Juvenile Lichianus Gecko. Alright guys, so before we actually get into this cage build and this background design and everything, I really wanted to go into a little bit more about, you know, what my lychee that I purchased at Tinley actually is and, you know, and who I got it from and sort of my experience buying him. And the thing with lychees is, is there's a bunch of different localities um, and, you know, people are, of course, line breeding them just like we do many reptiles for higher percentages of whatever color they're going for. I don't know a lot about lychee localities at this point in my life. Um, and so I talked to the gentleman that I bought it from, um, extremely nice guy. His name is Noah. Uh, he owns Noah's Boas. Um, so he's um, working with uh, a lot of different animals, many geckos, look like a lot of New Caledonian stuff on his table. But if you go to his Facebook page, you'll see that he looks like he has some really nice Amazon tree boas. Um, and honestly, really just a very nice guy to work with. And while he told me the information on the parents and showed me some pictures on his phone while I was at his booth, I didn't uh, really retain that information and being that it was Tinley and the things were crazy and it was like elbow to elbow people in there, I, uh, I ended up having to get in contact with him after the fact and he was very quick to respond and he gave me um, all the information I was looking for. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you this little guy real quick and then we'll talk about uh, sort of his parent parentage and or lineage and uh, what we can expect to see from him um, in the coming years as he grows and develops. So here's a little guy right here. There he is. As you can see, 
Lichianus being the giant geckos that they are, this guy is still very young and pretty small. And this is about what he looks like right now, fully fired. I went ahead and put him in a little tub and made sure that it was nice and dark for a few minutes and he fired up really nice for me. So this is what I'm expecting. He was uh, purchased as a high color gecko and obviously right now he doesn't look like he has a lot of color. Uh, but when I talked to Noah, I found out that his parents are pretty amazing. And as I talk about them, I will go ahead and put the pictures on the screen for you so you can see what they look like. But uh, his father is an Island E and or Moro locale. Um, and he's got some really nice pink coloration on him um, uh, from Purple Bloodline. And the mother was sold to him as a GT, uh, Grand Terre, or Yate. Uh, but what he said is that when it started to grow, she began to produce eggs at a really small size. So he's actually not 100% sure that her lineage was accurate when he got her, but she has some really, really beautiful pinks on her as well. So what I can be expecting to see from this guy uh, is as he grows, we should definitely see some more high contrast colors, hopefully some nice pink polka dots coming in all up and down his sides. And uh, being that he is an offshore island cross, um, he is not going to be the biggest of all lychees, um, which is probably a good thing, uh, honestly, for my first lychee, maybe not get the largest locality going. But uh, this guy is going to probably get somewhere between 10 and 11 inches, and there he goes. <laughs> Doing the New Caledonian free jump. But yeah, he's going to be between 10 and 11 inches and probably about 200 to 250 grams. So still a really substantial, really impressive lizard. And uh, if you remember from the Tinley video when I talked about my pickups, I did a little bit on, um, you know, the story of this guy. So I walk up to Noah's table and I find this lychee sitting in a little cup for $350. Yeah, you heard that right, $350. I look at my brother, I'm like, Charles, hey, <laughs> there's a lychee on that table for $350. So I said, um, hey, we need to go take a look at that. So we did. We walked over, we took a look, we started talking to Noah about it. And I mean, he just really seems like a genuinely honest guy. So when he uh, told me what was going on, he said that this guy ended up coming out, you know, as a hatchling with like the very smallest of underbites, which basically means that his lower jaw protrudes out just the tiniest amount past his upper jaw so um you know he's got what would by many be considered to be a small defect um and so he just didn't feel right charging you know eight nine hundred dollars for this baby lichianus with this with this small defect and he figured you know i'll bring it to the show i'll be honest with people which is really appreciated and i will tell them you know what's going on and you know if somebody wants them then that's great and for me honestly that was perfect you know i was sort of blowing my budget at Tinley, as many of us do. There's just so many different things to get. So I had already got quite a few things and, uh, you know, 350 was more than fair. So I went ahead and picked him up. And, you know, uh, I'm really happy I did. Like I said, this guy's pretty much just gonna be a pet for me. Um, it's possible that if that underbite sort of corrects, which I had heard from a couple other breeders at the show, that if he's, you know, kept in the proper levels of calcium and protein as he continues to grow, that underbite might correct itself, then maybe one day we'll consider finding a mate for him. But that is not priority right now. Right now, I just want to set him up in something really nice. I want to watch him grow, and I just want to enjoy having a lychee. All right, so as you can see here, I start by taking the old background and using it as a template so I can get that thing exactly the size I need it. Basically, I just take a hacksaw blade and I cut out the basic shape of the background and then take some sandpaper and just sort of even up those edges a little bit. All right, so what you can see me doing here is I've decided I want to try to go with like a sort of tropical buttressing root type design. So I'm cutting out these pieces and sanding them down so that they can actually come off the background in sort of a 3D fashion and look like uh, big buttress roots that you would see in the rainforest. So just figuring out the layout for how I want them here. So I'm basically just trying to get another idea here of what it's going to look like. And I'm going to go ahead and mark off my roots so I know where not to carve it down too much. So I have a place to attach those later. And as you can see, the carving is actually done with a wire wheel uh, that I attached to the end of my drill. 
So uh, this is a pretty long process. It takes a lot of time just to sort of, you know, visualize what you want. Uh, but fortunately, um, it's a process that's pretty forgiving of mistakes. So, you know, sometimes the drill gets away from you a little bit, but it's really not a big deal. You can just sort of keep going and shape it down slowly until, you know, your vision sort of comes to life. And unfortunately, this time lapse got cut a little bit short. So uh, we'll explain that in the next clip. All right, so here's a couple of shots of the background um, after the carve. And then here you can see after the first couple coats of the paint. So we'll go into explaining exactly what happened here. Here's the background in its current state. You can see it's already taken some paint. And uh, so basically, in the beginning, during the time lapse, you can see I was going for like a really 3D buttressed sort of tropical tree root effect. But I decided to scrap that idea because it would have meant I had to glue those roots down and uh, it would have taken up a lot of space. It's a small terrarium. But uh, so what I'm going for here is sort of a darker background with these lighter colored trees. And I've already done the base coat of paint, which is all this dark brown color. And then the next coat on the actual trees themselves and the root systems down below. And sort of the way you know, that you saw in the time lapse how I actually get the rough, you know, part of this design carved is I start with my drill and a wire brush. So, see all that foam coming off of there? Basically, I just use this to carve out the rough design of the, uh, you know, of what I'm looking for. And uh, then what I can do is I can come in with my soldering iron and this little fine tip here and I can get sort of these really deep, these really sort of deep sections that you see in here around the trees that really give it that 3D effect. See how deep in that goes? That was with the soldering iron. And you know, you can make a couple of other little effects like these, you know, deep gouges down here for the roots. And then, you know, when I begin to paint, I use dry lock. And I get the white tintable dry lock. Um, so basically, this is a masonry waterproofer. Uh, it dries really hard, almost like rock. Um, and I buy the white tintable so that I can change the color, quite obviously. So some of the colors I use are these quickcrete, this charcoal uh, color here. And then I have the, the buff quickcrete dye. So basically, these are dyes that are used to color concrete, and they work really well for this as well recently come into some information that you can use a small amount of acrylic paint to change the color as well. So I have this green acrylic paint here, just a really cheap little bottle of acrylic paint you can get from Walmart. And I'm going to use it to try to make some moss colors on this thing on the final uh, part of it. And of course, cheap paint brushes. Always use the cheap paint brushes for this. Um, occasionally you get a bristle come off here and there, you can just pick it off. But you know, this stuff's pretty hard on brushes, so you really get a couple uses out of them and then you want to get rid of them, so that's what happens with that. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll into another time lapse, and so you can see, you know, me try to finish up the paint job on this background.
right, so as you can see, getting the paint job, getting close to where I want it, but I do have some more painting to do. Painted the back, painted the sides, but I ended up going ahead and cutting this thing down um, because I realized that when I measured out this background, it went floor to ceiling from the back of the enclosure. And I have this really intricate root system design down here that I'm pretty proud of and I'd like to be able to show off. And I realized that if I didn't cut off some of the top so that this would go further up in the enclosure, that uh, all, pretty much all this root system is gonna be buried under substrate. So I went ahead and took a few inches off of the top. So I lost a little bit of the intricacy of my branching design up here, but I think I'm still okay with it. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to finish this paint job so we can get on to actually putting this terrarium together today. So what I'm doing here is a dry brush technique. I'm taking that green tinted paint that I want to get the moss effect with, and I'm getting most of the paint off the brush and just sort of rubbing the trees down with it so it's giving sort of a nice green tinge um, to create that effect of moss growing on the trunks of trees. So just about 10 minutes ago, I got my notification that FedEx package was delivered from Pangea. That is my go-to for most of my supplies and stuff that I order, including my gecko food. But they also carry a huge range of supplies. And for the bioactive stuff that I've already done with my tubs, um, I've used this substrate from them before. It's their ABG or Atlanta Botanical Gardens mixture. It's a really good substrate for bioactive tanks. The isopods and springtails do really well in it. And the other crucial part, which I haven't actually ever used before, I decided to sort of go my own way for my tubs and use pea gravel, which is extremely heavy and hard to move around. So I'm um, very excited to go with this uh, clay ball drainage. Uh, Pangea calls them the aqua balls. You can also find them online labeled as hydroton. So basically what I'm going to be doing is going to be rinsing these guys out, getting all the excess dust off, and this is going to be my drainage layer for my bioactive terrarium for my new Lichianus gecko. So what I'm doing here is cutting some window screen for the separation between my drainage layer and my substrate. So here I'm just pouring the aqua balls into a strainer in my sink. And I'm just going to run a bunch of water on them, get them nice and rinsed off. They have a lot of dust on them inside the bag. And I just really don't want all that dust in my drainage layer. So we'll get them nice and rinsed off, and they'll be ready to put in the terrarium. All right, so as you can see, I've got the terrarium here. Um, what I've done is I've gone ahead and take the hose attachment on my vacuum and just sort of vacuumed out as much of the dust as I possibly can. So now the next thing I wanna do is, obviously I wanna get this price tag off of here. I'll just use a razor blade to scrape that off. And uh, I also want to just give this whole thing a quick wipe down. Probably just gonna use water. Uh, I'm not gonna bother trying to use any sort of chemical or anything like that. Um, but let's go ahead and do that now.
So here I'm adding the aqua balls for my drainage layer. Just getting them nice and flattened out. And here I decided to add some more. I wasn't quite happy with the thickness of the drainage layer. So put some more in there, get them flattened out. So an important aspect of how these bio balls or aqua balls work is they basically have a lot of surface area on each ball so they grow beneficial bacteria which just sort of helps keep your ecosystem in your terrarium in balance. So now I've fit that piece of screen that I cut earlier and that's going to create a separation between my substrate and my drainage layer because ultimately I really don't want any of my substrate mixing with my drainage layer. So here I finally get to install the background and you can see it's cut to size so it fits in there really snug and I don't actually have to use any sort of adhesive to keep it in the terrarium. And I think I've achieved what I wanted to in cutting that down so the substrate shouldn't hide too much of the background. Alright, so here I've got the terrarium installed on the baker's rack that it's going to go on in my living room. And I'm adding the ABG substrate now, making sure it gets down in underneath the background. And we just get a good covering everywhere. And we can see that screen is working really well to separate the substrate and the drainage layer. So we'll go ahead and add the rest of the ABG now. Make sure there's a nice layer in there for us to plant our live plants coming up. So here I'm just trying to hardscape the thing with a couple pieces of cork bark that I picked up. And uh, there's not a lot of room in this terrarium, so I'm really only going to end up using a couple pieces. It's basically just trying to figure out what's going to work best. So filming myself putting in these plants proved to just be too complicated, so I went ahead and did it without filming it, and I'll just show you the result. See, I have some pothos planted along the back there, and I was able to secure these longer pothos vines to the background using a little bit of uh, gel super glue, just a couple little pieces. Safe for the plant, safe for the animals, dries up nice and clear. And I also fashioned a nice little hanging plant here. It's artificial, so I don't have to worry about that dying. So next step is I'm gonna add some leaf litter to the bottom, and then I'm gonna add in my cleanup crew, some powder orange isopods and tropical white spring tape. All right, I got the leaf litter in, so as you can see here, I have a good assortment of tropical white springtails from my own personal culture. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure they're all in the water and just sort of dump them about. And as you can see, they're gonna go ahead and settle in. So I got my powder orange isopods here that I borrowed from one of my bioactive tubs because they're really flourishing in there. So I'll just go ahead and get them into the enclosure here. Maybe. There they go. Off to do their isopod things. And we are all set up. So she's all planted, hardscaped. She's got drainage layer, substrate, leaf litter, nice water dish back there. And the final touch one of my handmade feeding ledges that hold the half ounce feeding cups. Magnetic. Definitely will work for the little lychee for now. Not strong enough to hold him when he's an adult, but it's not going to live in this thing for very long. Anyway, there we go. Now is all there's left to do is introduce the lychee. All right, so I got our little guy here. And he is looking absolutely beautiful right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just 
let him crawl out onto the cork bark and get used to his new enclosure. And he's gonna go hide right away. And we'll go ahead and put a food dish in there for him tonight. We'll just let him get settled for now. <laughs> 